before before <laughs> what is up all you sexy nerds grizzly mcbee here and you are listening to and watching nerd is the new sexy entertainment the podcast episode number 180 the big boss episode the season finale for season nine yeah yeah and i am joined today by the one the only the man the myth the legend you love him you hate him he thinks he has blue eyes but they're really brown because he's full of shit wildfire one Uh, you know, he, that was almost perfect until you you opened your mouth and then little shit spewed out. <laughs> hey, we were, it was going to come out either way. So. Yeah. And so, we were also joined by the one, the only, Fan Dominion. Hi. Hi. <laughs> she's, she's obviously doing something behind her. You, do we, I'm, you, I'm, I'm uh, pulling up the we, list of... Uh, you're, acting like, you're acting like we don't know, but we know, we notice. Oh, all the porn. Lord of the Rings porn. So, I don't look those, at Lord of the Rings those of you porn, that have been following me. us, uh, you know that this is part three to our Lord of the Rings saga. Started um, on 170, uh, did it every... We did it every, we every did five it episodes. 175 for the mini boss, and now we're on the big boss episode, the season finale, and we are finishing up mm-hmm. with the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, we're finishing strong, I'd say. And there's a few other things before we before we finish with the Lord of the Rings. Before we continue with the Lord of the Rings, uh, I think it's what the the Return of the King is the yep. one we're on. Uh, before we finish up with that, I think uh, there's been a lot of celebrity deaths. And a few in particular have, like, hurt my soul. Uh, and I wanted to kind of talk and, and, and touch base on some of those. And so before, like, in the beginning of this episode, let's let's talk about some of the greats that we lost this year and maybe some of the not-so-greats, you know? <laughs> uh, I think that, I think that honestly, I think that everyone we're going to mention is going to be a great, a great and amazing actor in one way or another, but... Uh, it's, it's 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 a great loss. Yeah, which uh, is, is a great segue to our sponsor of today's podcast, Depression. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Life Alert. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh god damn it! It'll change your life. Like, like oh god. <laughs> okay, well, start us off in January. Who's a big name? Will probably know. Uh, Carl Weathers. Okay, well, who would we know Carl Weathers from? Predator. And he was in Rocky and The Mandalorian. He played Apollo Creed. Uh, Toby Keith, uh, country singer. I'm going to brush past this one, O.J. Simpson. <laughs> I believe we can talk about O.J. Come on. O- I, didn't, I didn't even know he died. Yeah, yeah. he died in April. <laughs> yeah, O.J. Oh, Simpson wow. died in April. He, uh, he w- I mean, he was a big part of the 80s, man. Like... He OJ it's it's as as much whether he did it or not he did it he still was like a big part of like the Naked Gun series oh, like he was also an NFL football star yeah yeah he, yeah he was also a Naked Gun so that that's I care more about that than football so uh, and his name was the Juice the Juice is loose yep I wonder why <laughs> <laughs> Donald Sutherland. Oh, Donald yeah, Sutherland. That one hurts. Mm. That one hurts. Mm. Yeah, that sucked. I heard when I heard about that. <sighs> invasion of the Body Snatchers. Okay, that's one. Uh, come on, there's more than just Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Hunger Games. Okay. Richard Simmons. Richard Simmons, who... By the way, going back to our, our, Man, our, our uh, Mandela Effect episode, I guess there's a Mandela Effect on Richard Simmons... That I guess he passed away. I, I I know I talked to you about this, Grizz. Yeah, I guess he he, he's, he supposedly passed away in the eighties. Or yeah, or like the nineties or something earlier. And then this yeah. is the second time he died. I don't remember the first time, so <clears throat> I guess I'm not from that universe. Richard Simmons was known for a like he was a big big workout buff in the eighties, known for sweating to the oldies and being extremely kind of flamboyant. Very happy. He was a very happy guy. 
spectrum. We can call it happy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, did you ever see him unhappy in these videos? And there's another Mandela effect. He was supposed to be seen with his uh, headband on all the time, which is that's where I remember him. Right, Grizz? You remember him with a headband? All the time. Now, supposedly, like, he doesn't have a headband no more. Bob Newhart. Bob Newhart, which... Comedic genius, great actor. Um, last time I really saw him because I binge watched all of the uh, the Big Bang Theory recently, and like, yeah, he was he had a few parts in that. It was it sucked to see him die. He's that was kind of when did he when did that what month was that? Phantom. He died in July, mm. ninety four. Yeah, it was that that seemed recent. I remember everyone talking about that one. Uh, Shelley Duvall was also in July. Oh, Shelley Duvall, yeah, when we know her from Popeye, Shining. The Shining, which The Shining was amazing. Uh, she played the olive oil in Popeye. Uh, kind of quit acting, more or less, because at one of, point. Because um, of, uh, yeah, because of the director, what's his name? Stanley Kubrick. Yeah, Mr. Kubrick. Brandon, uh, Brand, Brendan Hill. Uh, Bernard Hill, who played King Theoden. Thank How old? 78. 78. Well, one that, that really got me, because it was pretty recent, really iconic for me growing up because of his, his music. Um, and then in the movies that he's been in, uh, the great Chris Christopherson. Uh, he was in The Highwaymen with uh, Willie Nelson, Johnny Cash, and mm. uh, Waylon Jennings. Uh, he was also uh, Old Man Whistler in Blade. Oh, yeah, that, that, yeah. Yeah. 88 years old. Uh, John Ashton. The name sounds familiar. I can't place it, though. Uh, he played uh, Sergeant John Taggart in Beverly Hills Cop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I actually remember seeing uh, the news on, on his death. That was that sucked. This one hit me harder than the other one because of the franchise that I like so much. And that's Maggie Smith. That was definitely not who I thought she you were saying. <laughs> British actress who played Mrs. McGonagall in the Harry Potter show. Yes. Uh, well, I... That is not who I thought you were going to say, but at the same time, I could see why it, it affects you so much. It'd probably affect fandom, too, because uh, that, that actress was very good. She, she was just, and I, I do remember, she she passed recently, too. It was like last month, wasn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. 26th. Yeah, Jesus. Doesn't feel like right. it was that long ago. Here's the one Wilde's probably waiting for. James Earl Jones. Yes, that's the one that hit me the most out of all of them. Like, yeah. Don't get me wrong, I, I'm sad. There's There were three names that passed away in my lifetime so far that I can think of that I'll tell you right now hit me the hardest. James Earl Jones, of course. Tom Petty. Gene Wilder. Though when those three died, like, a part of my soul left me. Like, I feel like I, feel like I lost a part of myself because was, they were big on my childhood. James Earl Jones passing was a slap to the face. Yeah, he was getting old. He was, he was up there in age. 91. Yeah. Did you guys know that he sold his voice rights to Disney? So Disney, yeah, that. Disney can yeah, AI yeah. use his voice. Yep. For anything. Now. Yep. For I mean, if you think about it, if he's going to do it to anyone, it might as well be to Disney because they own Star Wars. Well, they own Star Wars and Mof Mufasa. Yeah, uh, Matthew Perry. Uh, Matthew Perry, yeah, the, that one was a shock. I don't, I don't know if we wanted to go that far back, but yeah, Matthew Perry was. You know, what's funny is Matthew Perry got really big for a while, like after Friends. He got really big, and then just, like, no one cared about him out of nowhere. Or maybe he stopped, maybe he pulled a Rick Moranis and quit for good reasons. I don't he know. He had a lot of drug problems. Oh, well, that makes sense. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Another one is uh, Richard Mull from last year, who mm -hmm. played Bull on Night Court and did a lot of uh, B-movie stuff uh, from the 80s. He was a good actor. Yeah. Uh, Suzanne Summers. Mm hmm She died, yeah. Last year, yep. Michael Gambon. Well, if you're going yeah, back, there's one name I'm waiting for you to say. I know. We'll look up there. Uh, David McCollum was in the original uh, 
man from Uncle. He was also on NCIS. Jimmy Buffett. Yeah, Jimmy Jimmy Buffett. Yeah. Bob Barker. But well, Bob Bar. Yeah, yeah. But that that was what two? That was like two years ago. Now you're going. Oh, that fall. was last year. Was it? Yeah, that was last year. That was last August. Mandela effect. Oh, I call him Mandela effect. He died twice. Yeah. A name you won't sit. recognize, but uh, you'll know her achievements. Her name is Rachel Lillis. She was the voice of the original Misty and Jesse in the. Oh, oh yeah, she. I'm so it. glad you brought her up. I I almost forgot. Um, she also played the voice. Did the voice for Vulpix, Venonat, Goldine, and Jigglypuff. Yeah. Great voice actress. Uh, you, I remember all the memes when she passed. Like, one of my favorite ones was like, like all of the characters sitting next to, uh, like all the male characters sitting next to like Misty and Jesse's graves. You guys yeah. know which one I'm talking about. I might have yeah. put, I, I might have posted, or it might have been someone else who posted on the Discord. But it was, it was, it kind of moved me. You know what I mean? Like it was almost, it was almost as, as relevant to me as that of that um, that picture of like. Harold Ramis walking away with Slimer after he passed. That brought me fucking to tears, dude. Like, oh. Oh, uh, here you go. This is probably the one you were waiting for. Paul Rubens. Yeah. A.K.A. Pee Wee Herman. Yep. Last year. A.K.A. Yeah. Um, Oswald Cobblepot's father. In Twice. Gotham and in the movie. <laughs> Twice, yeah. Okay, and... here's one that you probably didn't realize. Tony Bennett died last year. Who was Tony Bennett? Remind me. He's a singer. He was 96. Mm. So for those of you that you know grew up watching wrestling from the seventies, eighties yep. into the the twenty tens, there were uh, two wrestlers that have passed away. One recently, Afa Anawahi, who was one of the tag team members in the Wild Samoa, passed away last. Week. Those of you wrestling fans out there. Who else, Chris? And uh, Sid Vicious. Oh, it's shit. A Psycho Sid. I had no idea Sid Vicious died. Yeah. Tina Turner. Tina Turner, yeah. Uh, one that uh, hurt me last year was uh, Richard Belzer, who was played uh, Detective John Munch on Law & Order SVU. Yeah, I, I knew it was going to be a SVU character. And then also Lance Redrick uh, was in... He did voice work. Um... He was on The Wire, uh, and he was also in the John Wick movies. Shannon Doherty died. Did not know. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh. So one of the main writers uh, for Disney, Richard M. Sherman. Oh yeah, Richard Sherman uh, passed away. When? Passed away. When did he pass? May twenty fifth. Hmm. Huh. He worked on uh, Mary Poppins, a lot of the old de- like stuff that Walt worked on. Like the Three Musketeers, the yep. 1961's Parent Trap, mm. yep. Sword in the Stone, Winnie the Pooh, Jungle, the original Jungle Book. Aristocrats. All, all good fucking names. Even the Aristocrats. Aristocrats are banks. Everybody wants to be a cat. Meow. He helped write Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Charlotte's Web, bed knobs and broomsticks. Lots of lot. The, the list goes on and on. Chitty yeah. chitty bang bang. Chitty chitty bang bang. Wow. So uh, that list was something we wanted to talk about earlier in the podcast, like earlier in the season, but we just never kind of got to it. That and then podcast has own. Yeah, it really could oh, have yeah. been. I mean, we've we've been sitting here talking about it for twenty five minutes, more or less. Maybe end of the year we'll do another like. Or maybe in the future we can do a podcast of like celebrity deaths that shocked oh, us or something yeah. like that. What, Grizz? Tony McFar. Never know who he is, but he's Chris Pratt's stunt double. Oh. Huh. Oh yeah. Stunts True. for Teen Wolf, a Homeland, Sleepy Hollow, The Walking Dead, Manhunt. And he's been Chris Pratt's stunt double since Guardians of the Galaxy Two, Jurassic World, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, hmm. Hunger Games, Furious Seven. The reason we we do these like moments of of like when we talk about celebrity deaths is because these are these are people who more or less 
had affected us one way or another. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we were fans, uh, not just fans, but they their deaths kind of like hit us, you know. And if it didn't hit me, it, it they're they're talking about other people too that, that it hits them. So that's that's why there's a name. And like I like we said earlier, we can do we could do a whole podcast on this alone. But I think it's time we go to the main topic. The main topic is what you see behind her and behind me is going to be the king. yeah the return of the king. So where do we stop on the last podcast and let's continue from there. Okay, so again. First little bit of this is going to be Aragorn and those guys, then Frodo, Sam, and Schmeagol, and then after that. Uh, so we st- where we stopped with Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, Pippin, Merry, all those guys last time. Uh, so in the beginning of the movie, Return of the King uh, actually takes place in the second book. So I stopped there, and we're going to talk about it here. Um, mm-hmm. So in the movie... They write to Isengard, uh, Men of Rohan, Gandalf, Gimli, Legolas, Aragorn, and they meet up with Merry and Pippin there, who are on gu- are guarding. They're smoking and eating. So they get there, and Saruman's up in his tower, still. So they get there, and Saruman comes out. Well, they meet with Tree Bear, Tree Beard, of course. Saruman comes out. Him and Gandalf basically have pretty much the whole. Same conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the movie, this all got cut out unless you watch the extended edition, which Christopher Lee was very pissed about for this reason. Oh, it's, I know what you're talking about. Go on, go on. Saruman dies here. Saruman and Gr- uh, Wormtongue die here in the movie. Yeah. In the extended. Not in the book. Saruman and Gr- uh, Wormtongue get locked in or think and they're kept there by Treebeard for a for a bit. But in the movie, Thaden tries to get Wormtongue to come down after Gandalf breaks Saruman's staff. Staff, staff, staff. You staff. you just you just said it with the the Middle Earth accent, staff. It's like it's like the other night when I said the podcast. The podcast, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Poodcast, yeah, yeah. So Grima ends up wanting to go down, and then Saruman insults him. And then Grima stabs Saruman in the back, and Saruman dies at this part. So, what's interesting, this behind the scenes, um, when they were filming this, Peter Jackson says to Christopher Lee, I want you to scream when he stabs you in the back. And Christopher Lee's like, I'm not doing that. Peter Jackson's like, why not? Have you ever stabbed a man in the back before? Because I have. They don't scream. Well, he didn't realize who he was talking to. Christopher Lee was a legend. Like, holy shit, we could do a whole thing on him if we wanted one day. Mm-hmm. But wasn't just so an he actor. Was... He he's well, he was in the military. Yeah, he was a. And he was a, a badass. Officer. He was a he was a spy in World War Two. Yeah. Uh, he's also Dracula. So. Blah blah blah. Blah 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 blah. So, Saint, uh, Saruman ends up falling, um, like spinning, falling. And hitting uh, a wheel, like a, we- a water wheel, yeah. with spikes, and he's dead. And then Legolas shot Grima, so Grima's dead too. And Grima is Wormtongue? Yes, Grima Wormtongue. I'm just making sure, because I was like, you said Wormtongue earlier, and I'm like, who the fuck is Grima? Grima Wormtongue is his full name. I was always wa- I always wondered what happened to him, because they just disappeared, you know? like. Yeah, it's just implied that they're in the theatrical cut that they're just stuck in Orthanc. You guys have been in prison forever until starvation. I mean, you're not going to fucking piss off the trees that just wrecked your shit. No, I mean, they, he already did piss off the trees. That's the whole reason they wrecked Again, their shit. Yeah. yeah. Pippin finds the Palantir, which is the orb thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so. The seeing stone. Yeah. In the book, Grima gets pissed and chucks it out the window of Orthanc, not realizing what it is. So he gives Saruman beats him up in the because you just I forgot him. what happened in the book. That's funny. So uh, Gandalf takes it, of course, and then they don't ever go back to Edoras and have a big feast. Mm-hmm. They are still on the road. They're planning on going to Gondor. I think at this point, I believe, yeah. if I remember correctly. So Pippin, that's how of we course, do. Is like I want to go look at that thing, so I'm going to get put 
take it from Gandalf while he's asleep. Yeah, I remember, that was in the that was in the movie. Too. Yep, he swipes the stone from Gandalf, and he puts a boulder there, <laughs> in its place. He comes back to Mary and he looks into it, and that all happens the same. Where Sauron appears in it, and he's like in a trance, and he can't let go of it. And then Gandalf has to come take care of it. But this is out in the wide open. And one thing is, uh, so they think, so Sauron at this point thinks that Mary. Pippin is at Isengard, because he has no idea that Saruman's been defeated. Mm -hmm. So he's sending uh, ring wraiths over there. And the men of Rohan and uh, company, they all hear the screeching. Uh, get so this is where the part of Mary Pippin and those guys end in the second book, where they insert it into the third movie, uh, is Gandalf and Pippin leaving for Gondor. Mm. that's where it ended in the second book for them but since we're on the third movie we're gonna keep going so it picks the first third book picks up with gandalf and pippin heading to gondor one difference here is the gondor beacons are already lit because denethor actually is doing trying to do something so it wasn't it wasn't then like in the movie the movie they had uh they had Pippin, Pippin do it. Gandalf was like, put yourself to use, you dumb bitch, and then make, made him go fucking like that shit. Yeah, yeah. When they get to Gondor, a lot of the same crap happens. He gets, they get up the, to Minas Tirith, and they talk to Denethor. Pippin explains what happens to, what happened to Boromir, to Denethor. Uh, Denethor is a lot more kingly. Uh, in the book, I understand kind of what they did in the movie, but in the book he was actually trying to combat Sauron in mm. a way. That's why he was sending aid, uh, getting wanting aid from Rohan. He even instructs a messenger to send the red arrow, uh, which is like a, sig sig a symbol of like aid and help to Thaden. The red arrow sounds like like a sex move. During a period. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Pippin actually is becomes friends with a city guard, um, a citadel guard that he ends up working with named Bohem? Bar uh, not Bar it's not Boromir, it's like I'm on it. Bohem? <laughs> Grizz is looking I have it up. Freaking book right here. I could look it up. Let's see who's faster, the internet or the old way. Well, I know the chapter, so who will get it first? Baragond. Baragond. Okay, the old way worked this time, Grizz. Baragond. Bear. Bear. G. Baragond. Bergold, 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 B E R E G O N D, Baragon, Baragon. There we go. That's it. Father looking. For Seems like a throwaway character. He was in the third company of the Citadel, by the way. Oh, yes, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, he ends up becoming friends with him and friends with his son. So everything in Gondor happens kind of the same. So Faramir comes back. They have a council. Dedithor's like, is there not a captain here who would do his lord's do lord's will? And Faramir. The conversation that Faramir and Dedithor have about the ring and Boromir is actually Gandalf, Faramir, and Dedithor. Ah. And Gandalf's actually the one who says, he would not bring you the... Uh, if Boromir had returned with the ring, you would not have known your son. So Faramir leaves with his men to go try to take back the Pale North Field and the river border like in the book like in the movie and they get beat yeah they uh, get their Faramir. ass handed to them Faramir gets hit with something called the Black Breath uh which Mary actually got hit with by a, a Bree back in the first book so it's like very it's kind of like the Morgul Blade uh, it's hard to kind of describe but it just makes you weak and it's like poison it's when a ring wraith makes out with you so the Siege of Gondor happens pretty much the same. There's a general orc called Gothmog. The siege happens basically the same. Faramir comes back injured and Denethor 
loses his mind. Uh, but we find out kind of why Denethor has been spiring, spiraling into madness. It's because he has a Palantir as well. So he's been trying to battle wits with Sauron. And that's kind of why he goes crazy. <laughs> mm. So Pippin tries to stop, uh, like in the movie, tries to stop him from burning himself and Faramir alive. So he goes and he tells Baragon what's happening. And he goes, even if uh, if a knight leaves the citadel, leave their, leaves their post, like if a guard of the citadel leaves their post without being uh, dismissed by the lord, uh, it's, it's treason, yeah. So he tells, um, Pippin tells Bar- Baragon, this is what's happening. If you want to save Faramir, because Baragon is, um, loyal to Faramir, he goes, you ne- you're gonna have to break your oath, and Pippin runs off to go find Gandalf. And when he goes, so, battle's happening everywhere, when he gets to where he's about to find Gandalf, in the movie, he finds Gandalf, Gandalf pulls him on Shadowfax, and they ru- ride up, and then they meet yeah. the Witch King in the movie. The Witch King never enters the city in the book. He also can't break Gandalf's staff. Uh, the Witch King is powerful. He is not that powerful to be- break a wizard's staff. In the book, the, do- uh, the gates open, and the Witch King is on a horse, or on a fell beast, or whatever. Uh, and Gandalf is on the other side of the gate, uh, on Shadowfax. They basically have the same conversation. Go back to the abyss that you, you're, awaits you and your master. Gandalf, at this point, if the writers of Rohan hadn't showed up right there, probably would have went uh, super sane, released his Maiar power. So, a company in the night comes. It's Elrond's twin oh. sons. Okay. And a bunch of rangers. Uh, from the north, uh, Dunedain, like Aragorn. At that point, they can get all they can use all the help they can get, right? Yeah, uh, that's when they uh, Aragorn decides to go to the paths of the dead, and everyone's like, "Why is he doing that? Why is he doing that?" So he leaves, and they get to. Um... I like in the movie that the paths of the dead was like talking to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was almost like, "Hey, come here," and, and he, he looked at it, and Gandalf's like gives him that little Miyagi nod, like, "Do it, do it." Gandalf wasn't there at that point. In the I thought he, but was he? Was someone who no. gave him the Miyagi nod? I think it was Theoden. Mm-hmm. You might be right. Yeah, it. you're right. You're right. It was. I knew it was and some great fucker. So, Legolas, Gimli, Aragorn, uh, Elrond's twin sons, and then the uh, rest of the Grey Company go to the Pass of the Dead. But first, they stop in uh, Dunharrow, where Eowyn is. And Eowyn pleads with Aragorn to let her go with him. Like, she's crying at this point, like, wanting to go. And he says no. Of course. So she ends up staying. Say, kind of basically confessing her love to him. In this instance, they hadn't had much interaction like they did in the movie. Yeah. So. Well, even in the movie, it didn't feel like much interaction. Yeah. Eowyn is very much, like, he kind of says... You're in love with a shadow of a thought. Uh, it's just the idea of him that yeah. she's kind of in love with. Thoughts could be fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the Grey Company leave to go to the Paths of the Dead. And then Mary is with Theoden and his men. They come to Denharo. And Eowyn, at this point, is just distraught. Uh, she does help Mary get ready to go, even though... When the time comes, Thayden says, no, you can't come, it's not a place for you, none of my men can bear you. Then he's approached by a man who's like, I'll bear you, basically, on my horse with me. Mm-hmm. So they ride together, and when they get to Gon, so they are passing, getting to Gondor, and they're stopped for the night. Uh, Mary has no idea this is Eowyn, like, he does not know. At all. It seemed like in the movie, like, there was a little he wink, knows. like, hee hee, yeah. Yeah, he knows in the movie. In the book, he does not. So, he overhears wild men talking to Theoden. And wild men, uh, I forget what this guy's name is. Uh. Not, uh, not wild men, look it up. Who gets it? Bon, Bu- bon, bon, Uli Han. Bon, Uli Han. 
Bon, is that, that's an interesting... Bon Hulihan. That's made up. That's not a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have the book right here. Gone Bori Gone. Gone Bori Gone, yeah. G-H-A-N. Yep, yep, yep. B-U-R-I. Oh, I think I'm going to have to get the... Found it. The point goes to Grizz this time, even though well, fandom yeah, kind of found Gonburi it. Gonburi Han. Yeah, Gonburi Gon. Or I can't remember how the guy pronounced it in my... It's a, it's a weird sounding name, that's for sure. Yeah, it's... I can't... I don't know who uh, Tolkien based the Wild Men off of. Uh, I, I'm i sure it's probably one of the dramatic tribes in um, medieval history. Makes you know, sense. What's crazy like, is, is I got that name off of fandom.com. <laughs> You found my secret. Uh, oh, 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 fandom secret. <laughs> Her only fandoms. We must have the precious. Uh, <laughs> I don't think she heard me, Grizz. No, I heard you. I'm just oh. ignoring you. Oh, okay. So, the, so the orcs have set up along the road, like, all these traps, and... Gon, Booney, Gon Hooney Hunt, or however you pronounce it, I don't care at this point. Gone with the wind gone. Yeah. Has uh, came to Thade and says, we don't like orcs either. We don't like Sauron. We're going to take you through a secret path through the forest to get you to Gondor. So they do that. And then they show up. And the Witch King hears the horns. Thaden gives a speech in the book and in the movie. Uh, it's kind of different. It's kind of the same. Well, it's got to uh, be. It, uh, of course, the king's got to give a fucking like. Yeah. A, a, an epic speech. epic speech. Yeah. yeah. Great so they get into the battle. Uh, a, I, it's in a little bit into the battle, like in the movie. Uh, there's the Ollie fonts everywhere. And then the Witch King comes and takes out Theoden. Eowyn shows up and the Witch King's mocking, like, get out of, like, don't b- get between a Nazgul and his Move, prey. All bitch, that. get out the way. Yep, yep. yep. And... And then she's like, she pulls her tits out, and she's like, I am no man! You wish that happened. That, that was in the porn version of The Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if it did, I have no idea. That's one so, I've yet to, yet to watch. Yeah, it's called Horror in the Rings. Lord of the Anal Rings. So this is what she says. Uh, her name, name she gave, uh, her fake name was Darehelm, but no living man I am... You look upon a woman, Eowyn, I am Uman's daughter. You stand between me and my lord and can be gone if you be not deathless for living or dark undead. I will smite you if you touch him. That sounds like, that sounds like Old English. To- no, Tolkien's writing. Like, I liked the movie version better. It was nice, short, and to the su- sweet and to the point. And she's like, she's like, I am no man. I am a woman. I do this. I do that. Look rawr. Mm, die. And yeah, it, it was, it was too much in the book, but it's, Tolkien like was bad about it. It was just, you know, like, I like you, Tolkien's writing. there was a great, there was a great, like, there was a great moment of surprise in, in that moment, even though we knew it was her. Right. But like in the book, you didn't know, but, <laughs> but in, but in the, the, in the Nazgul's eyes, like in the witch King's eyes, he didn't know. He didn't know that. He didn't. So, like, she pulls her shit off and she's like, I am no man. It was perfect. Instead, she's like, I am no man. I actually have a vagina. I'm going to talk in monologue for five seconds. Now you know I'm not a dude. And now, now it honestly, it gave him plenty of time to fucking stab her. Or the Nats cool to just bite her head off. Yeah. Or give her the dark breath STD. So, Mary uh, stabs him. Mm-hmm. That was the Witch King, like he does. And the blade, the dagger he has, which he got from the Barrow Down, so not in Lothlorien, like in the movie, uh, he stabs him, and then Eowyn finishes him. Of course. So, that's how it goes. Uh, and that was Pippin's big Then moment. Eowyn passes out. Mary crawls over to Theoden, and Theoden's like, who is that soldier? I want to thank him. Before he die, uh, pass, uh, he's like, Wait, and then he's like, where's Amir? I need to talk to Amir because Amir is now king of Gondor. I mean, not Gondor, Rohan. Yeah. So Amir shows up and they talk and he's like, you are now king, the king of the Mark. And so he has some of the soldiers guard the body of the king. Until someone sees Eowyn. So Thaden dies basically without knowing. Oh, Amir. that sucks. I like the movie version better in that part. Because uh, there was there was such like there was such a good like 
back and forth between the two. Yeah, I get it. I get I get it. So they guard his body, and Amir thinks Awen is dead. Uh, and it isn't until they take he- her and uh, Theoden's bodies to gone into Minas Tirith that Prince... Okay, well, it's uh, Baromir and Faramir's uncle. That's all you got. Yeah. He's uh, one of the princes. He's a prince. He's one of, wait, he's a wait. One of the... Wait, wait. What's his name? You both should look for it again. This will be the yeah. tiebreaker. Tiebreaker! I wasn't paying attention. What are we looking for? Uh, what's the character's name? Faramir and Faramir's uncle's name. Faramir and Faramir's uncle's name. Elber- <laughs> Elberon. Elberoth, yep. Yeah, Elbereth. It's Elbereth. Elberon. Or whatever. Basically, at this point, Amir's just on a suicide mission. Like, I'm gonna take as many of these fuckers out as I can. Uh, so they got the Harad, Orcs, East- there's some Easterlings there, but not a lot. Uh, and then he stops and he sees the ships on the- on the- yeah, that's with the other wild men or whatnot. Uh, the Crusaders. Yeah. Uh, the Crusaders. He stops and Bad all guys. hope is basically drained from him until they see a banner that Awen, uh, Arwen made for Aragorn that has the tri- the symbol of the King Gondor on it. And it's the Grey Company. Yeah, All the so, dead guys. Nope. In the book... The army of the dead only help defeat the corsairs that are on the ships, and then when they show up to the Pelennor fields, they turn the tide of the war. Basically, mm. uh, a- uh, a- Amir's happy, and siege of Gondor is done. Yeah. So now so, we go to Hobbit Town. Hobbit guys. Not yet. Damn it. Pippin and Gandalf finally are able to get up to Faramir, and they notice there are some dead guards. Uh. Baragon had left his post because he wasn't going to let Faramir die. Mm -hmm. So he killed some of his guardsmen, uh, fellow guards. And Denethor has his rant. You're not going to take my son from me. Things basically happen the same. Uh, Denethor burns himself alive. Yeah, which, by the way, let's talk. I'm going to talk about that. I know in the movie that he's just, that guy is just an unlikable character. Like, yeah. The, the, yeah, that guy just, he, he's sitting there, he's, when he's eating, and he has, like, was it, was it Pippin? Or was it? Yeah, Pippin. He has Pippin sing for him, like, he's like, all this bad shit's happening, but I'm just sitting here, just stuffing, and they did such a good job, because they, like, did this close-up on his mouth, and it was just disgusting while he was eating, and he, and, and, yeah, and he's, like, fucking, and Pippin's singing, like, this most sad fucking song in the context of everything going on while he's singing, and... It was just, it was, it was a very, it was a good moment. Like it just, but it just made it to where you just looked at that guy and you're like, that guy's a douche. He actually was ready to go. He was getting ready to go fight when Faramir was brought to him. Yeah. So then we get to the house, uh, the houses of healing and stuff. Uh, Air, uh, Amir comes in and he's like, why is uh, my sister's body not with the king, with Theoden? And they're like, oh, she's not dead. She's in the houses of healing. So he goes there. Aragorn uh, kind of covers himself in all cloak because he doesn't want anyone to know that he is there yet, mm-hmm. that the king is there yet. But it's said that the hands of the king are the hands of a healer. So he's able to hear, heal Fal- Faramir, Eowyn, and Mary. And then they plan to go to the Black Gate, which they do in the movie. Mm-hmm. Difference is, Aragorn looked into the Palantir back in Rohan. Not in the Gondor throne room. So, Sauron thinks Aragorn has the ring. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. I saw that. That's a big difference. Yeah. He's like, come, come, come fuck with me, man. <laughs> come do it. <laughs> so, they head to the Black Gate. During this time, uh, Eowyn wakes up. And she's upset. Mm-hmm. That she wasn't able to go because how injured they spent. It's like a week for them to get from Miss Minister to the Black Gate. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, about Mary. Mary was not found on the battlefield. Like, uh, yeah, he was in the movie. Uh, he was found wandering around the streets of Ga- uh, Minas Tirith, and then Pippin finds him. He was lost and he was injured like uh, bad from that's... the Witch King. Yeah. yeah. So Mary also couldn't go to the Black Gate. Mary was not at the Battle of the Black Gate. He was too injured too. Faramir and Eowyn basically spend this week getting to know each other, and Faramir, I think, I guess basically 
is able to give her lo- a love that makes her not want to fight anymore. Mm-hmm. At the Battle of the Black Gate, things basically happen the same. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Faramir and Eowyn plan to get married, by the way. There's that. At the Battle of the Black Gate, the mouth of Sauron comes out. And in the movie, he's all smiley and like... He's just marked as Teeth Guy. <laughs> teeth Guy. The mouth of Sauron, yep. Master bids thee welcome. So, oh, Jesus Christ, yeah, that guy. Difference here is Ganda, uh, Aragorn does not chop off the guy's head. <laughs> like he does in the movie. Makes sense. Uh, they just basically go, yeah, we're not agreeing to your terms. Because uh, Sauron was like, if you agree to it, my turns, I'll release your Frodo. And it makes more sense now that he thought Aragorn had the, the, the ring, right? Yeah. Yeah. The battle starts. And things are basically happening the same. Only Gandalf's not fighting. Gandalf's up on a hill watching. Because at this point, it is basically up to men yeah. to handle it. Uh, Pippin almost gets killed by crushed by a troll. The last thing he remembers before passing out is uh, the eagle, hearing people yell the eagles are coming. And that's where their part ends for now. Now, to Sam, Frodo, and Schmeigel. Finally. Uh, and what's funny is, is these orcs, uh, well, one of the orcs' name is Shadrach, and I'm pretty sure that's a name from the Bible. Yep. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are three yep. guys that get thrown into a furnace in the book of Daniel. <laughs> so. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. What's funny is they take, uh, these orcs think, uh, it's an elven, a mighty elven warrior that's following them and not Sam. Uh-huh. So Sam totally buys into it. And Sam, the ring tries to tempt Sam, showing him, like, Samwise the, the brave. Samwise yeah. the great. Yeah, I remember some of that, especially in the, uh, in the animated version. Yeah. Uh, but he doesn't really fall for it. Uh, when he gets to the tower, the orcs have basically taken care of all, himself, all, each other, at this point, because they were fighting over, um, the shirt, the shiny things. Yeah, the... Oh. Me thrill. So he gets in there, and he's chasing Shadrach around, uh, and he can't find Frodo, so he starts singing. He just starts singing, and then he hears Frodo respond, and there's a trap door in the ceiling of the tallest, like, floor of the tower, uh, and he's able to get into it, kill the orc that's in there, and then save Frodo. So, Frodo... Uh, in the movie, doesn't really freak out as much, uh, Sam, about him wanting to help him carry the ring at this point. In the yeah. book, Frodo freaks out because Sam's like, let oh. me carry it for you a little longer. And Frodo freaks out going, no, it's mine, my own. Yeah, my precious, um, yeah. So Frodo at this point is like buck naked, I think is what it is. Like, they stripped him like completely. So Sam finds some orc garb to wear and they both leave the tower to go to Mount Doom. Uh, they do get um, the orc band where they have to go into a march with the orcs and then they have to make a distraction to get away. And it takes them a week to get to Mount Doom. Yeah, that from sounds... From inside of... Yeah. Sounds about orc. right. And they're out of basically food and water at this point. They do find some water in a mortar that is clean, but not a lot. And they have the whole conversation of, do you remember what this is, what the Shire's like. This yeah. Is Frodo, and Frodo's like, no, I don't. So they get to the bottom of Mount Doom, and, of course, Gollum's been following them. And at this point, Gollum's trying to get the ring. Like, hand fist, get the ring. And this is when Frodo stands up, and he says, if you touch me again, you will be cast into the fire of Doom. And that's what happens. And when they get there... Everything happens the same. Frodo cr- claims the ring as his own, puts it on. Turns Which, by the way, off. fuck Frodo for turning like that. I mean, I get that he couldn't help it. Yeah. But, like, the whole idea of a hobbit doing it was that it wasn't effect- the pa- effective. The problem is the power of the ring got it was so strong at that point because it was at the source of where its power yeah. Was, yeah. was made. That's the problem. One of the reasons why it probably couldn't get thrown in the first time, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, but, it wasn't even gonna ever be thrown in. Uh, a seal, a seal there just took it. Yeah. And then what, what if what if Samwise just shoved Frodo in? Sam wouldn't have it. Well, anymore. I mean, like, what if what if it came to that? Like, yeah. What if, let, let me let me ask. Let me put this as a perspective for Grizzly. Grizzly, let's say you and I are Frodo and Sam, right? 
and I, I and I am holding this ring, and I'm like, no, it's mine now, bitch. And 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 if I hold on to it, the world is fucked. What are you gonna do? Let the bitch burn. I, I honestly, I wouldn't hate you for shoving me in. I'd be like, okay, like that would make sense. Oh man, as soon as he Frodo puts the ring on, uh, Gollum smacks ha Sam on the back of the head in the movie. Yeah. And book to knock him out. Yeah. Uh, and Sam gets up and he sees uh, Gollum fighting uh, something he's... that's not there, and he bites his finger now, off. In the yeah. movie, Frodo and Gollum fight for the ring, yeah. and they go over, and Frodo's ho hanging on, and Gollum falls to his death. Yeah. In the book, it's very heavily implied that divine in intervention has happened here. I remember Gollum that. Yeah. Just Happy dancing. He's like, yay, I have my precious, I have my precious. And then he just falls off the edge. In the animated series, in the animated movie, too, he did yeah, that. He was that, dancing. That's what happened, yeah. Yeah. El, er, er, Erlu Aluvatar, basically the god of Tolkien's world, would not have able ever let the, the ring be not destroyed at that point. Sauron was always going to lose. Yeah. Which you gotta, which is very, a uh, very... Catholicism, very Christian. Religious. Yeah. It's not as ham-fisted as Narnia, but it's there. Sam and Frodo get out of Mount Doom, and they're talking how Frodo now remembers the smell of flowers, the taste of water, the taste of food, and they're walking, and they go up on this little hill, and they realize that I it's remember. like... I miss my all... finger. Yeah. <laughs> They're surrounded by lava at this point. Yeah, they're getting ready to be and fucked. And that's when they see the eagles come in. Sam's actually the one who wakes up after Frodo, so they're both in the same room being healed, and they're both surprised that Gandalf's there. And they don't know at the... They kind of know, but they don't realize that it's uh, Aragorn that's the king, because Gandalf's like, oh, the king wants to see you guys. Um, so they put on the clothes they were wearing in Mordor, uh, and when they get down to the camp, because uh, Aragorn hasn't come to uh, Minas Tirith yet, besides healing people and sneaking out, mm -hmm. that's when they have like the big cheer. Like in the movie, it's after Aragorn's coronation how he kneels and says, "You guys bow to no one." Uh, in the book, it's right then and there, basically. In uh, there was also right a good of... scene in the movie where yeah. you bow to no one. Like it, it showed, it showed, it spoke volumes about Aragorn. You know. People complained about the movie having a lot of endings. Oh boy, do I have news for you. <laughs> From there, they travel back to Minas Tirith. They do Aragorn's coronation, basically, in the streets of Minas Tirith. Uh, Faramir brings down the crown, and he hands it to Frodo. Frodo hands it to Gandalf, and Gandalf crowns Aragorn king. Mid-year's day, so in June, uh, they Ar uh, Aragorn and Arwen get married. So after that, so the hobbits are there for like a month. Uh, so at the end of the battle... Amir, he a Amir and Awen head back to Rohan for a bit to get things ready for Theoden's funeral. So Theoden's not buried until August. This, uh, this ending goes on and on and on compared to the movie. <laughs> oh yeah, it's not done yet. So Jesus on the Christ. road, they go back to uh, Isengard. And Gandalf's like, oh, I'm going to talk to Sar Saruman. Saruman's not there. Treebeard, Treebeard kind of let him go because he's like, oh, he's changed. After me talking and talking and giving him news. So, and that's when uh, Air, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli split off from the Hobbits and Gandalf. Wait, are you telling me Saruman was just let go? Pretty much. On the road heading back to the Shire, they actually run into two beggars, and it's Saruman, Saruman and Wormtongue. And Wormtongue, at this point, is basically down on his knees like a dog. Like, Saruman has beaten which, the shit out of this man. <laughs> which he fucking deserved it. Wormtongue is an uh, asshole. He's not as bad in the books. So they stop in Bree, the hobbits and Gandalf, and uh, Gandalf kind of uh, chews out Butterbur because Butterbur was supposed to give Frodo the letter to, we remember that, to leave earlier. They hear there's something going on in the Shire at this point. So they get ready to go back and they're like, oh, well, we have Gandalf with us. Everything will be fine. And Gandalf's like, no, you guys have to deal with this on your own. I'm going to talk to Tom Bombadil for a bit. <laughs> The hobbits get back to the Shire, and there's a big old gate where there wasn't one before. And they have to basically push their way in because the hobbits are so the other hobbits are so scared to let them in to break any rules of the that their chief, uh, which is Lotho, Frodo's cousin, uh, of the Sackville Bagginses. Mm -hmm. So they get in and they're like breaking all these rules, and the sheriffs try to arrest them, but they don't. 
They're like, oh, we're on our way to meet with your chief anyway. So they take him to meet with the chief. When they get back to Hobbiton area, everything's basically been industrialized. Mm -hmm. Trees are gone. Uh, like the party tree that was at Bilbo's party is gone. And they're able to uh, build a Hobbit rebellion at this point. And they take out all these ruffians, these big men. Uh, like, Hobbits are vicious. Like, the Tooks are freaking insane, man. Finally get into Bag End and no one's in there. And then they meet... Uh, Sharky is who they, who's been in charge. Uh, but Sharky is actually shot Saruman. And uh, Frodo is like, this bothers me, but not like... How you want with them? Is this his fucking like way of of yeah, that, like it's re yeah. like a Scooby Doo revenge? Yeah, Frodo's like I forgive you and you can leave. Uh, Saruman tries to stab Frodo, but he has of the Mithril on, so it doesn't do anything. So he gets tackled by a bunch of hobbits, and he's like, "No, don't hurt him. We I don't want any blood spilt here." It says that he has bewilder. Uh, Saruman has bewilderment in his eyes, respect and hatred towards <laughs> Frodo. So Saruman gets up and is going, starting to leave, and a uh, worm tongue is with him. And, uh, Frodo goes, Worm, uh, Worm, Grima Worm Wormtongue, you don't have to go. You, you don't owe him anything. You can stay here for a little bit, rest, and then leave. And Wormtongue was going to do that, but then Saruman is like, oh, he hasn't done anything to you. What do you think happened to old Lo- to your cousin Oth Lotho? Grima here killed him. Oh, shit. And he's been so hungry, maybe he even ate him. Well, I hope he buried him, but I think he probably ate him. And that's when Wormtongue snaps, goes, You told me to do it. You told me to do it. And he stabs Saruman to death. A, ho a bunch of hobbit archers take uh, Wormtongue out. <laughs> they end up getting what they deserve, I guess. It's like very shortly after this, Frodo's like, Okay, Sam, you know, I have plenty of room. Come live with me in, hob in Bag End. Because you're my... You're just going to be my steward, basically, at this point. My I would love... To live at Bag End. He's like, I beg your pardon, Mr. Frodo, but uh, you see, Rosie, uh, she was kind of mad that I left uh, this past year. So she wants us to get married, like, right away. <laughs> so they basically get married right away. Frodo's like, there's plenty of room in Bag End. Bring Rosie and both of you can live with me. Hell and, yeah. Uh, and they have their first baby, uh, Eleanor. And then Frodo one day goes, uh, it's a year later, basically, and it's Frodo and Bilbo's birthday again. And Bilbo passes the old toot who lived to 130. To 131. So Bilbo uh, is now 131, and he goes, "Let's go. Come with me, just to a little bit, so you can I can go see them." He leaves him back end, leaves him everything, and they get to the road, and that's when they meet up with Gladriel, Elrond, Kelborn, and Bilbo's there too. And this is when Frodo reveals he is leaving Middle Earth. Arwen had given Frodo her spot on the boat. And the reason why is because he's a ring bearer. So Gladriel is a ring bearer, Elrond's a ring bearer, and so is Gandalf. And they're all leaving. Sam goes home with Merry and Pippin. They all say goodbye to Frodo and Bilbo. It ends, the wor last words in the book are the same as the last words in the movie. Sam going, well, I'm back with his family. And then he goes to the back and bangs the shit out of his wife. Well, he they have uh, 13 kids. Right. Sam oh. also was a ring bearer for a little bit, you gotta remember. Mm -hmm. So Sam, after Rosie dies, leaves Middle Earth and heads west. Valinor, to the okay. Undying Lands. Okay. Alright guys, I think with that, uh, we're gonna wind down the podcast. See you next season, bitches. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, the end of season 9, so if you guys want us to any ideas, anything you want us to talk about in the next season, uh, there's a number to call. That number is what, Grizz? That number is 559-997-6803. Almost like you forgot Again, about it. that number is 559-997-6803. Give us a call. Let us know what you want us to talk about in the future. What is, if you want us to try snacks, review a game... Anything like that, you can always follow us on all of our social medias, YouTube, Twitter, or X, as it's now called. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, Anchor, and Kick. Yeah. Well, Anchor is no longer Anchor anymore. It is Spotify Podcast, Spotify something, Spotify. Lots of social media. 
You can watch some of us stream. I think Phantom's back to streaming. Trying to be. Yep, and then and Grizzly will stream occasionally. He just got done streaming a scary game uh, for his punishment. And that game plays up all of this month, all of October. He's Fuck no you, monster. Game. All right, guys. We'll, uh, we'll end the podcast there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next month. We're probably going to take about a six month to a year. I, uh, in between break, because God damn it, we need it. Uh, but between then, let us know what you guys want to see from us, what you want to hear, and all this other fun stuff. Till then, we want you to stay nerdy. Stay sexy. Always.